Hello, I will talk about an FPT algorithm for recognizing k apices of minor closed graph classes. This is a joint work with Inas Sao and Dimitrios Telikos. My talk is divided in four parts. I begin by introducing some context, some definitions, and some history regarding our results. The problem we study belongs to the general family of graph modification problems. What's the graph modification problem? It's the problem of certifying whether we can modify a graph such that the resulting graph has some desired target property. Modifications operations can be local modifications on the vertices and the edges of a graph, while the target property is described in terms of a graph class P, characterized by structural or logical properties. There is a plethora of algorithmic results in the literature concerning graph modification problems, and many theories and applications arise from the study of these problems. In our approach, we allow only vertex removals. Thus, for every fixed graph class P, the problem we study is vertex deletion to P, where given a graph G and a non-negative integer K, we ask to find a vertex set of size at most k that after removes from g, the resulting graph is in p. This problem can be reformulated in terms of recognizing k apices of p, that are graphs k verts away from the target property p. In the sense, the graph shown here, the figure above, is only a few red vertices away from having the, let's say, blue property. Also, another way to use this problem is to ask to find a vertex set that when removed, we get rid of all obstacles to the target property P. This problem does not describe only a specific problem, as we can see, but whole families of problems for different choices of target properties. In this sense, it is a meta problem. And here, we can see a list of problems spanned by the framework of this meta problem for different choices of P. Most of them are well known problems, and in our results, we provide efficient algorithms solving quite many of them. So, what's the computational complexity of this general problem? A classic result of Lewis and Yanakakis answers that question. The problem is MP hard in general. So to deal with its intractability, we see the problem from the angle of parameterized complexity. We parameterize the problem by k, the number of allowed vertex deletions, and we ask, is there an algorithm solving the problem running time f of k times a polynomial of n? Or using the terminology of parameterized complexity, is there a fixed parameter tractable algorithm, an FPT algorithm? The answer to this question is not always affirmative. We have some complex results, so, so we do not expect FPT algorithms for every case. For example, the problem is W hard for some target class, and NP hard even for K equals zero for other. But what about graph classes that are minor closed? To define what a minor closed graph class is, we first need to give the definition of a minor. A graph H, as the ones on the right, is a minor of a graph G, if it can be obtained from a subgraph of G by contracting the edges in these colored bags in G to single vertices, while translating the adjacencies between bags in G to edges of H. Now, the graph Class P is minor closed if for every graph in P, all its minors are also in P. So we focus our study on minor closed graph classes and we ask for the parameterized complexity of the problem in this case. And in this case, the answer is yes, the problem admits an efficient algorithm. It admits a fixed parameter tractable algorithm. And this is a result that has some history behind it. It dates back to the seminal work of graph minors of Robertson and Seymour, 
the existence of an FPT algorithm solving this problem is a non-constructive consequence of graph minors. The constructability of the function f in the parametric dependence of k was proven later by Adler, Grochen, and Kreutzer, but they didn't provide any bound on this function. So, after proving the fixed parameter tractability of the problem, efforts focused on specifying or optimizing the function f for strict cases. For example, for the class of bounded tree with graphs, a single exponential bound on k was proved by two different groups of authors. Also, there is a series of results concerning the case that p is the class of planar graphs, where the champion of our algorithms is the one of Janssen, Locksteiner, and Sauer of time 2 to k log k times n. Moreover, in the case of graphs of Euler genus at most z, Martin Pilicuk and Thomas Kuchimaka provided an algorithm with running time single exponential in k square log k. In this point, I, I would like to introduce some notation. Here, and in the rest of the presentation, we use a subscript in the big O notation in order to hide the dependence on secondary parameters concerning the target property. For example, here, the Euler genus. Now, for the general case of the problem, for every minor closed graph class, only very recently, an explicit function f was given as a byproduct of the results of Fomin, Lokstanov, Panolab, Saurab, and Zehan. This function is still enormous, or to use the words of the authors, homungus. So, but we do what is our result is to solve the problem for every minor closed graph class. In fact, for every fixed p, we provide an algorithm solving vertex deletion to p in time 2 to poly k times n to the third, where poly is a polynomial whose degree depends on p. In the special case of minor closed graph classes, excluding some apex graph as a minor, that is a graph one vertex away from being planar, we improve n cubed to n squared. Now I will describe the tools we use for our approach. And these are the following. First, we use iterative compression technique, where we assume to have a solution of size k plus one in hand, and we search for a solution of size k. Now we distinguish two cases. In the case the input graph has three width bounded by a polynomial function of k, we attack the problem with dynamic programming by using as a black box the optimal result of Bast, Sau, and Thilkos solving this problem. In the case now the tree width of the input graph is big enough in terms of k, we aim to reduce the input graph so as to achieve bound tree width and fall to the case above. We do this in two ways. First, we use branching. That means we find a set of O of k vertices that we prove that intersect every possible solution. We guess part of the solution in this set and solve all occurring reduced subproblems whose number is linear in terms of the parameter k. Moreover, we rely on irrelevant vertex technique. We aim to detect irrelevant vertices that are vertices whose removal from the input graph does not affect the existence of the solution to the problem. So removing such vertices will reduce our input graph. In what follows, we describe the series of algorithms that are subroutines of our general algorithm, aiming to reduce to the bounded tree width case. And we begin with algorithm A1. Now, given a graph Z and two non-negative integers R, K, algorithm A1 outputs either a report that we deal with a known instance or a report that the tree width of Z is linear in terms of R and K or an R wall of Z. A wall 
is a graph as the one shown above, is a grid-like graph where its bricks, the cycle surrounding the face inside the world, can be subdivided arbitrarily. The running time of this algorithm is sigma exponential in R square and K log K, and linear in N, the size of the input graph. And in fact, this algorithm is a creative combination of a number of results in the literature. Applying this algorithm for inputs that we know a priori that have big three width and are guess instances, we will assume that it outputs always the third case, the wall. Now, algorithm A2, we are given a wall of a graph and we aim to find a set of vertices as the yellow ones here and a graph as the one shown here, a flat wall, with arbitrary connections between the vertices and the flat wall. To give some intuitive definition of a flat wall, well, it's a bidimensional wall-like structure as the one shown here that is close to being planar in the sense that it can be embedded in the plane in a way that its non-planar pieces are emerging from the bricks of the wall. These non-planar pieces shown in orange here are called flaps of the flat wall. So, more formally, given a graph G, two non-negative integers R, T, and a wall of G of size linear in R, algorithm A2 outputs either a minor of G isomorphic to KT, the complete graph on T vertices, or a small, in terms of K, set of vertices, A, called apices, the yellow vertices in the field and a flat wall of G minus A of size R, whose flaps have bounded three width. This algorithm runs in time single exponential in R and is derived from the work of Kavarabayasi, Kabayasi and Reed, and Kavarabayasi, Thomas and Wally. We will use this algorithm for some T depending on P, such that the first possible output the complete graph on T vertices, is a certificate that we deal with the known instance. Now, the most interesting part comes in algorithm A3, the finale of the pursuit of the relevant vertex. Given a graph G and a big enough flat wall with flaps of bounded tree width and a few apices, algorithm A3 outputs an irrelevant vertex inside the flat wall. The running time of this algorithm is simply exponential in k log k. But here, the devil lies in the details. What is behind this big enough size of a given flat wall? To find an irrelevant vertex, we need to search inside a flat wall whose size is polynomial on k, where the degree of this polynomial depends on the target graph class P. But why do we need such an enormous flat wall? To get some clue, let's get a closer look on how a flat wall may look like. Here, the green areas represent the flaps of the flat wall. And of course, this is a complete mess. To find an irrelevant vertex, we need to find an area inside the wall where the behavior of the flaps is more or less the same. And this wall is far from having this property. Thus, to tame this variety, we need to find an homogeneous wall. We need to find a flat wall, the given flat wall, who is homogeneous. Homogeneous in the sense that graphs invade its flaps in a similar way, or a bit more formally, a flat wall whose flaps have the same behavior with respect to the ways partial models may be rooted through them. Sometimes this is called foliage. Thus, we ask for flaps with the same variety of forms. Having such a homogeneous flat wall in hand, we can build an irrelevant vertex argument by proving the re redundancy of a vertex among many flaps of the same variety of forms. The notion of homogeneity inspired by Robertson and Seymour, but we built our arguments stepping on a new notion of homogeneity 
introduced by BAST, Sound, and Thilicos, used to support their optimal results. Of course, as we mentioned earlier, to find an homogeneous behavior inside a flat wall, we need to have a really big flat wall, a wall of size polynomial on K, crucially depending on the target graph class P expressed through the variety of volumes. And that is the price of ensuring homogeneity. Now, let's describe our main algorithms. And we begin with the general case. Here, we are given a graph G, and as we mentioned earlier, under the light of iterative compression technique, we are given a vertex set S, a solution of size K plus one, the ver red vertices in the figure above, and we search for a solution of size K. Our A is to obtain a graph of bounded tree width. So as long as the tree width of G minus S is big enough as a polynomial function in K, first, we run algorithm A1 and find a wall in G minus S. Then, using this wall, we run algorithm A2 and find a flat wall of G minus S with a set of few abscesses A. So, where we end up is at a flat wall and several flying, let's say, vertices, the vertices of S and A depicted in red and yellow above. And we find a piking of disjoint subwalls of W. Now we distinguish two cases, depending on how much connected each one of these walls of a piking is with S and A. In the first case, if every subwall has more than the size of A neighbors in S union A, then we prove that there exist many copies of obstacles to the target class P that are pairwise disjoint except S and A. So to get rid of all of them, we essentially need to pick a vertex from S union A to include in the solution. Therefore, what we prove is that there is a, at least one vertex from S union A in some or every feasible solution to the problem. Thus, we branch on S union A. That is, we solve so many problems as the vertices of S union A by including each of these vertices to the solution and solve the remaining task with a parameter reduced by one. In the case that one of these walls in the packing has few neighbors in S union A, then we use this wall to define a new flat wall and run A3 on it and finally detect an irrelevant vertex. We remove this vertex from the graph and repeat again the whole procedure. Therefore, after repeating this algorithm at most linear on n times, we end up with small tree width bounded by a polynomial on k and apply the dynamic programming black box in the bounded tree width instance. But where does this polynomial on k on the tree width comes from? As we underlined earlier, to find an irrelevant vertex, we need to begin with a wall of size polynomial on K. We need to pay for homogeneity. And this gives us the bound on tree width. And also the fact that all algorithms used here have the size of the wall in the exponent gives us the dependence on K on the running time of this algorithm. The dependence on the size of the input comes from the fact that identifying a irrelevant vertex takes linear time. The total running time to solve the initial problem requires an additional linear factor on n being brought by the iterative compression. Now, in the special case where our target class excludes some epic graph as a minor, here we use a slightly different approach. We can avoid to use iterative compression and save a linear factor in n in the running time. This, as we will see, is an advantage we have because P excludes a graph with one apex instead of many apices in the general case. So the algorithm does the following. As long as the tree width of G is big enough, we begin by running algorithm A1 and we find a wall W of G. Then for every 
possible sub goal of W, we run algorithm A2. If it outputs a flat goal, we then run A3 and find an irrelevant vertex. We remove this vertex from Z and repeat the whole procedure. If not, then inspired by the ideas of Marx and Slaughter to solve the planarization problem, we guess a vertex and run a flow algorithm. If we find a big flow to this guessed vertex X, then we prove that it is in every possible solution. So we remove X from Z, reduce K by one, and repeat from the beginning. If we don't find a big flow, then the report we have is that we have a no instance. The running time of the algorithm in terms of k is 2 to the poly k, since we again need to pay for homogeneity. As for the dependence on n, except of the linear factor on n we save due to the absence of iterative compression, we also save time by applying at most k times the extensive part costing quadratic time of the flow algorithm. Now, the reason of distinction of the two algorithms is that here, in this special case, the guessing part involves one vertex because we aim to get rid of graphs with one apex. In the general case that we want to get rid of graphs of many apices, we would need to guess subset of vertices of size equal to the number of apices and thus get this number in the exponent of n and have a blow up in time. To conclude, I would like to point some issues. First, using our approach, we can solve variants of the problem, such as the annotated version, the weighted version, the counted version, and more. Also, as we saw earlier, the price we pay for homogeneity results in this non-uniform polynomial on K. Is this unavoidable? Can we get a uniform polynomial on K, not depending on the target class? bypassing the issues that arise from homogeneity? Or can we get something even better by cascading irrelevant vertex technique? Also, we are not aware of any lower bound better than single exponential in K under exponential time hypothesis. And this leaves a huge gap between this lower bound and the running time of our algorithm. Finally, we can consider dealing with other modification operations. For edge removals and contractions, we know how to do it. But for edge additions, we have no idea. Thank you.